Hey guys, World Leader here. Today I will be going through Tier 14 and hopefully passing through South Peak so we could finally reach Tier 15. Now, before I go ahead and start, I really want to apologize for not posting recently. Um, it's not because I'm burnt out, it's not because I'm not enjoying it anymore. I personally have just been doing a lot of stuff at work due to the holiday season, but now that it's finally coming to an end, I should be returning to YouTube. I will try to do patch notes, but I'm definitely gonna be doing uh, regular videos like Let's Plays and fan reviews, maybe even some Know Your Heroes, but that's pretty much what's gonna be coming in the near future. There's gonna be something different um, released when I do hit 1,000 subscribers. Right now, I think I'm currently at like 840 or something like that. So I just want to say thank you so much to all of you people that have just been supporting me just by watching, helping the community in the comments and honestly like subscribing and some of you even share my videos and honestly guys, that's amazing. Thank you so much. So right now I'm going to be rocking two mythics and a four piece set. All of this is going to be from tier 14 Titans. Now you don't have to run these mythics. If I'm being completely honest with you, you can literally just run the set or whatever you're running right now. Honestly, more than likely any set will do depending on what your setup's going to be looking like. I chose this one because personally, I like the resistance it comes with since I'm going to be farming a lot of Titans. I don't have to worry about having a better tank around or a better bait. I will be able to fill that role since I have a lot of water resistance. As you see here, I have 20 water resistance, but deal 10% less damage, which is fine because I have deflect to help with that damage. 25% uh, water resistance while below 70% health, which is nice. And a little bit of block in there. And if I'm in the front, 3% team and rage, which is awesome. Now, it's a very solid set for the Titans world boss, in my opinion. For everything else, it's okay. It's not bad. Um, the resistances are nice. Um, but personally, I got it because I'm going to be using it in an area where I'm going to farm a lot. And that's going to be Titans. I don't have to rely on a full team. I can probably get by with just two people. And hopefully, eventually, I can solo some of the earlier content. So that's kind of the goal right now. For the Mythics, I have Quetzal War Shield. I actually got this before any set piece. So I was like, you know what? I'll keep it. It has Deflect Chance. And it's probably one of the best, if not the best, Mythic main hand in the game when it comes to DPS roll. And a little bit on the tank roll side. Let me go ahead and check out the skills. It's not too bad. I love the shield self few times. It's very, very nice. The skills are super nice, honestly. Um, if anything, it does lean a little more towards DPS, but it still has a pretty sustainy attack with the one SP, which is the shield self, which is honestly very, very good. And I love it. So go ahead and go into the last mythic piece that I have which is gain damage reduction the lower health or the lower your health percentage is up to a maximum of 10%. So I can go up to 10% extra damage reduction. The, the mount I'm going to be rocking is my deflect chance mount, but I also have this other mount, which is Spomder, that if I might need more block instead, I will try to use that. Let me see if I can actually upgrade. Not chest yet, actually kind of far away from that, but that is fine. For the runes, I'm going to be running all deflect. I have the wall rune for my upwards triangle, my downwards triangle. I have the nonic rune, which is more more uh, damage reduction, which is great. I love this one because of the shields. Um, it's it's awesome. When you do proc it, it's really, really nice. Now, this one's here, the core rune, so I can benefit more from heals, both for my pets, my abilities, and for my runes. Very, very nice rune to have. Unfortunately, I won't have any redirect, which is kind of a bummer, but I haven't gotten lucky enough to roll that just yet. Now, to go onto the enchants, it's all over the place. I need better enchants. I have enough to make mythic enchants. I just need the gold, of course. <laughs> and I also need to decide if I'm going to stick to deflect or if I'm just going to hold off and pretty much revolve around whatever mythic accessory I get. If I'm lucky enough to get another legendary accessory, I can hardcraft whatever I want. But right now, that is not the option. I'm gonna have to be rolling soon. Once I hit 10 mil, if I hit 10 mil before I get another legendary enchant, I will be rolling. So I'm pretty much gonna be doing as much block and deflect as possible. If I don't have any of that, I'll do something like evade maybe. So that's pretty much what I'm running. It's not over the top. I mean, you might think these mythics are over the top, but this is literally more of a world boss set than anything right now. So you guys can easily get away with this using um, the raid set, I believe. Um, 
or just using this set with two legendaries. As you can see here, my ring and neck are not maxed and I'm pretty certain that we can get through the flags. Let's go ahead and check it out. We're gonna start off with the first flag in South Peak, Forsaken Swamp. Clear Forsaken Swamp of all enemies. We're gonna be getting Rune Fragments, a major revive potion, and 10k gold. Love the gold, I'm excited for the gold. Let's go ahead and check out the rewards real quick. We have a possibility of getting Kimu Sa uh, Saga, Kimu Saba <laughs> schematic, and the Sakurigu schematic. Honestly, not very useful to us, so that is fine. Now, everything here, of course, is kind of useless. The only thing you would probably want would probably be uh, maybe the schematics, and even then, it's not too crazy. So we're gonna go ahead and go on by. Let's go ahead and check out the team. So right now, we are rocking me in front as main tank, so I can take the closest. We have, I'm gonna put a lot of second. A lot of second for bait, and also if there's a closest to, he'll be there. We're gonna have Eulerius in the back, just in case they have attack furthest or attack strong or attack strongest. It'll attack Eulerius, I believe. Um, and we also have Drazig on third. That way he gets hit as least as possible. The only two attacks that can target Drazig are going to be target or damage all. There's not going to be anything else in this area that will target Drazig unless Lattice is gone or unless Drazig gets a beating down below the 2,229 threshold. So that's a good thing. This is going to be our team. Unfortunately, I still have my Lattice at plus two. I've been focusing a lot more on gear recently, which I need to step back and finish my Lattice. If I want to have an easier time, I need to max my Lattice. And that goes for all of y'all. Try to max your bait. Your bait has to be maxed. It's one of the few familiars that must be max stable. You cannot halfway stable a bait because they rely on those bonuses. Let's go ahead and go on through. Okay, we're going to turn off auto. Unfortunately, I got that shrine, but I don't think we'll need it on the first flag. We're pretty beefy right now. This guy looks pretty cool. Honestly, I love the artwork here. It's very dark. Okay, let's check him out. There's two newbies here. So we have a Mikey. A Mikey? A Mikey. Okay. They have 5% earth resistance, and as you can see here, you will see that they have more stats in HP. So they are going to be more of a tanky familiar. They have damage to the closest three enemies. Now this is a little bit of a problem because they can poke at Drazig, but it's not too bad seeing as their attack isn't too crazy since their speed is fairly low. Um, deals earth damage to the weakest enemy. Now this means that this person or this familiar is going to be targeting a lot of my lattice like my lattice is going to be getting hit pretty bad with the closest three and the weakest so we got to be careful with that we might have to take all the tanks first but we'll see what this other guy does musho muno musho muno has 7.5 earth damage now here it says deals earth damage to furthest enemy and root okay deals earth damage to strongest enemy okay that's fine and deals earth damage to the weakest enemy two times now we're definitely definitely gonna have to take this familiar out first because they are going to be targeting our weakest link which is our Aladdis. this guy has so much speed they are very scary and the fact that they hit two times means that if i evade one i can possibly not evade the other so we have to take this familiar out as soon as possible now let's go ahead and show you what Jurassic does real quick just in case you forgot we have closest enemy we have deals damage to target enemy, which is going to be the nicest part, but it also damages yourself. Remember that. But this is amazing because you can easily poke out whoever you want. We have heals target teammate, which is nice for healing specifically a lattice. We have damage the weakest enemy, which is perfect for finishing off any of those targets that we just couldn't finish off before. It's pretty similar to the target, so you might not want to use eliminate since it's twice as expensive, but you don't damage yourself. But to be honest, it's it's much more worth to just use the first three attacks than anything else. The last one is only if you have one enemy left, you really need to deal damage, and you have enough SP. So that's the only time you use pounce. Eliminate, not really recommended. Just pretend it's not there. So if you do have Drazig as your main powerhouse for your damage, you're going to want to be using one, two, and three only when you need the three. So let's go ahead and get on through this. I'm going to manual here real quick. Just want to see how it feels when they attack. So far they are attacking the furthest pretty bad. As you can see here, he's getting hit pretty bad. I would pretty much heal with a lattice only. I never attack with a lattice, only heal shield, heal shield, heal shield. Okay, so I'll target the back. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're pretty much melting them with like one hit. So I believe if you can auto this, go for it. But if you can't, again, just focus the back. I'm gonna go ahead and auto and see how we do. 
All right, so far it seems pretty seamless. We left there with more HP than we started with and more SP as well. Let's check this out. Any newbies here? So far, everyone's the same. We have three more of the DPS familiar than the last time. Okay, they seem to be hitting Hilarious pretty, pretty hard. So we might have a problem there. We'll see what we can do about that. If Hilarious gets any lower, I'm going to have to manual. Yeah, he's getting pretty low. So here, unfortunately, since my tank is a very, very weak tank, like, yes, I have a good amount of deflect, but it's it's an epic at the end of the day, and deflect is a pretty low percentage, so I'm going to have to take over here. Let me see what brain I have. If it's offensive. No, I have a heal team. Okay. So, yeah, that is worrisome. I'm going to heal my Hilarious. Heal myself. I'm going to heal. I need to take out the guy in the back really bad. Let me drain. Let me heal. Let me target the guy in the back. Heal again. Nice. Let's target the other guy in the back. Okay, cool. Now here we're just going to try to sustain as much as possible. The problem is here is you're seeing that they are poking out Drazic pretty, pretty bad. So what we're going to do is just try to give ourselves as much HP as possible in between everything. So here I'm going to heal Drazic himself. Hopefully we don't kill him here. We need some more heals. That's unfortunate, but it's fine. Either way, we left with more health on Eulerius than we did when we entered the battle. So that is perfectly all right. Okay, so in a time like this where they're all super weak, just save your SP and attack closest if you can help it or heal if you need to. Since they have attack furthest, yeah, they are going to completely destroy him if I don't heal him right now. But the good thing is he is getting his heals and his deflect procs. I'm going to drain closest instead of doing more damage nice since they're not really poking at me i'm going to try to kill them as fast as possible with my damage dealing attacks with my what's a war shield here i'm going to heal hilarious he's looking pretty bad here okay i got a little bit of heals here it's not too crazy healed myself go ahead and heal hilarious he's needing it pretty bad go ahead and drain with that okay we're doing perfect more health than we started with it seemed pretty sketchy but if you followed the way i was going you will be successful. Okay. Go on to this familiar here. Hey, okay, not as bad. I'm going to try to take him out really quick. Unfortunately, that did not happen. We need more heals on Hilarious. Get a drain in there. Okay, I'm going to attack those guys. Heal again. Do a massive heal on Hilarious. He needs them really bad. If I would have manual from the start, I don't think he'd be anywhere near this low. But unfortunately, I didn't. I'm going to choose to heal him here and then use use world eater or nub eater's main attack. Let me drain your SP. This attack right here, which is called the storm, uh, the closest two enemies in shock. I'm going to try to do that so I can get rid of these guys real quick. And go ahead and heal him. Now we're looking like we're pretty solid. So we're going to keep healing until we got maxed if possible. I'm gonna try to drain let's do i don't want to damage him but i'm gonna have to okay let's do shields now damage him again okay so we left pretty topped off on hp uh we can go ahead and continue and see if there's any gold because right now gold is very needed okay so first flag easy easy right now surprisingly our weakest link is actually hilarious which is surprising i would have thought it was a lattice now we are on flag two of south peak it's going to be Nerosonin, Nero then Nerosen, Neroken, whatever it is, Berkey Swamp. Find and defeat Neroken. We are going to be getting ancient fragments along with five epic materials and 10k gold. Is there anything here worthwhile? Does not seem like it. We're going to go ahead and enter and leave the team the way we had it. Okay, I wanted to turn auto off, but I always forget. This guy seems new. Yes, he is. Narosen deals earth damage to closest enemy, heals weakest teammate two times, heals target teammate. Okay, so they seem like a healer. Very low HP, very high speed. They'll be attacking first before anyone else on their team and very high damage. They have earth resistance versus earth damage, so that's good. But um, we have to see how crazy their heals are. It seems like we might have to target them out first since they will be kind of pesky and annoying. What I'm gonna do is just attack the back line like so. 
and maybe even see how much a lattice does. A lattice doesn't do too much, so I probably wouldn't try that again. I'd probably just stick to shielding with him. Now here, honestly, they're not really doing much, so I'm going to zero SP all the way through until I come across that other familiar that was a little more troublesome. That way I could stock up and attack when I really have to. And the cool thing with the zero SP with a lattice is I'm still topping off with the heals and shields. So it's not really a problem. So here, just zero SP, zero SP, zero SP. And now that I'm full heals, you're going to go zero SP shield. You see how much shields we got there? Pretty solid. Here comes some more. There you go. This is honestly a very, very easy area, and I don't think we're going to have any problems. Maybe after the first dungeon, we might have problems in the new area for this zone, but we'll check it out. So here we have the same guys. I think I'm just going to pretty much one SP all the way through. I'm going to put a little bit of shields here on Nub. Okay, zero SP looking great. Look at all that SP we got there. Honestly, this is solid get any more solid than this and that's because the lattice again is only plus two keep that in mind we are doing fantastic okay if it keeps going like this i might just skip to the boss it seems like it is so i'm just gonna skip to the boss see you there we should be pulling up to the boss there they are ah the cuisine. I was missing the last ingredient for my new dessert. You know what it is? The fresh head of a hero. Come here. Okay. I don't know what kind of dessert you're eating, chief. So what we're going to do is take out Musho Muno. I'm going to call him Musho. We're going to take out Musho before anything since Musho does do a lot of damage to Yalarius. And I'm pretty sure we could one, if not two, shot them back to back. Now, the problem is this person is going to be healing like crazy. They're not going to do too much damage because they're going to be, uh, be pretty much hitting me. I do have a lot of stuff saved. A lot of Enrage is saved just for this. So I can either use it on the boss or I can use it on Musho. I might use it on Musho personally. But um, if you think Musho is not a problem, you can of course use it on the boss. Now, in my opinion, I would say priority would still be Musho then Nerosen, and then of course the final Moaiki. Now, unless you're getting really destroyed up front because you don't have a really good accessory or a good set for this perhaps, then yes, you might want to consider taking out the guy up front first or maybe the guy in back since they do attack closest, but um, more than likely you're gonna wanna take out Musho. So I'm gonna go, with, go ahead and go with Musho. I'm gonna see how much damage I do with just the regular attack. Was lucky enough to destroy him right away. Now here, I can honestly auto, but I'm just going to show you how I would prioritize it real quick. So I would shield here, since a lattice really isn't that much of a damage dealer. Here I would try to nuke out the front with my enrage there. I will use my enrage from Drazig to destroy the guy in the back. Ooh, he's healing pretty fast actually. How much damage does this do? Okay, closest four enemies, pretty useless. How much damage was that? That's Decent amount of damage, decent amount of damage. Okay, so we're going to be using this 2 SP here. Pretty strong. We're going to go ahead and enrage shield. We're going to go ahead and do this random attack. Nice. Nice. Okay, it seems like we got a deflect proc because I think they attack furthest. And I don't think I have any offensive brains on. Yes, I do not. So that's perfect. It looks like Hilarious did his job, which is fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and auto on through the rest of this. nice so we went through that pretty easily got some gems got some gold some xp always nice let's go ahead and check out the next flag there's our rewards we are now on flag three of south peak defeat all the enemies in the wetland we're going to be getting elemental fragments mount guts and 10k gold again i love the gold check these one more time doesn't seem like anything so defeat all enemies seems pretty easy but then again, remember, Eulerius gets destroyed in the back. So just be careful. I am not going to auto, but I am going to be going through this pretty quickly since I know pretty much what we're doing. And if you are following along, you'll know more or less who to target. Now, since these guys are closest, I'm just going to be using my zero SPs. Uh, they're mainly the problem here. I don't have to have any worries with these healers. 
So in this scenario, just take out the front end if you have this setup of enemies. Use your zero SPs and you'll be fine. The only time you'll want to target is if you really need to kill them very fast since it's more damage or if you have a tank up front. Like for instance here, you're going to want to kill the second. So I'm going to target the second guy and now I can pretty much out of this area if I wanted, but I'm going to manual to keep it as efficient as possible. I'm going to go ahead and zero SP everything, zero SP, gotta remember zero SP all the way. We're doing pretty good here. We can top off with some more heals there from a lattice. Heals. Looks like I might have to use a shield on Nub here. Seems like we're fine. Tobert seems to be doing work, which is nice. I'm going to do some more heals for a lattice since the lattice cannot risk it. And we're going to feed off this guy by using as little damage as possible and doing nothing but shielding and healing. So here, since um, Draza gets SP pretty fast. I'm just going to waste an SP so I can shield up a little bit. Waste an SP so I can shield up a little bit. And now we'll take them out. Perfect. So we have a little less SP on Drazic, but that's fine. We have more than enough and we have a lot more shields, which is great. So here where you have two of these guys, of course, you're going to want to target these two. I'm going to actually use a lattice as well so I can get rid of them as fast as possible. Want to have to deal with them. Perfect. Now, honestly, once you get rid of those, you can just auto. Unless you really find that you need the SP, then follow the steps I showed you before and the other two um, enemies that we faced right before this. But once you get rid of Musho, you really have no problems and you should be able to just auto. Like this one right here, you should just be able to auto very, very easily. Perfect. Okay, seeing as this is pretty much the same old, same old, I'm just going to go ahead and run through this and see you at the end. Nice. So, pretty easy. Got some gems, got some gold, got some XPs. And we are going to be getting our rewards here and going on to our first dungeon of South Peak. Now, this is going to be Asunteng's Marshland. Finally defeat Asunteng. You're going to be getting the stat point and the 100 gems. Always love the gems. Now, it's going to be really easy. You can use your friends list. But before we continue, let's go and see the drops. Of course, we have mud as always. Love the mud. We have the Kimusaba schematic along with the Sokoragu schematic. We have the turnip, all the epics. We have sprocket, key, and more epic um, schematics. So the only good thing here really is probably the mud and maybe the turnip. And that's about it. Keys, of course. Go ahead and go on through the cosmetics are pretty nice from the epic so those are always solid now i'm just going to go ahead and use my um my friends list um you guys should be able to find pretty much anyone that can help you out that's tier 15 and above can probably solo this area so just ask around in uh, world chat or anyone on discord maybe someone in your guild you have that's a pretty high level you can use them and it should be more than fine we're going to go ahead and go, ahead and, uh, go on through this well, since this area is pretty easy, since we have our friends list, I'm just going to auto on through. I'll see you at the boss. Alright, pulling up to the boss now. What are the odds? I have a tomb in my back with your name. Wait, your name is Seth the Salesman, right? Oh no! Rip Seth! Okay, well... I was actually not on auto, I don't believe, and yeah, he died. So I will show you what <laughs> what they do after this lag, or dungeon, I'm sorry about that. Okay, let's go ahead and go to town, we don't really need anything here, go to town. And let's go ahead and check this out, they were called a sun tank. Strong one. Okay, so let's go ahead and view them. 10% earth damage. They seem like they are more of a DPS familiar, just seeing their stats. Okay. Deals earth damage to the weakest enemy and root, which is very, very bad for your baits. You will want to target this guy as soon as possible, unless you're running a double bait setup. Oxidize the enemy and shield. No, oxi oxidize the enemy shield and earth damage target enemy. So that's pretty crazy because of the target. It's pretty scary. 
um, deals earth damage to the weakest and strongest enemy two times. Now that one is pretty gnarly. Um, it targets your tank and your your bait twice in one move. So Muddy Tomb is very, very deadly. Deals earth damage to a random enemy two times. Now that one's not that bad, but random enemy usually means monster damage, which it is. So just be careful. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to take this guy out pretty easily, but if your friends list is a little lacking and you're barely getting by, consider getting someone a little stronger or just making sure you take them out as soon as possible. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and go on to the next area. Black 4, Vast Grasslands. Defeat all the enemies in the grassland. You're going to be getting Rune Fragments, 50 of them of course. Major Healing Potion and 10k Gold. Let's go ahead and check out the drops. So far, Turnip and Key is the best thing here other than some of the cosmetic portions of this. Go ahead and enter. We're going to keep the team the exact same until we see what our comp is. Make sure you turn off auto. Perfect. Oh, this guy looks really, really cool, actually. <laughs> Let's check him out. Okay, so we have two people here. We have Degenia, which is deals air damage to the weakest enemy and bleed. Now, bleed is very, very deadly. So the fact that a rare familiar has bleed as a zero SP means that we got to take them out ASAP. And their speed is very terrifying. This pretty much means that you're going to be getting some true damage pretty much directed right towards your lattice if you're using a lattice or your glars or whatever bait you may have or you if you're running bait so just know that this zero sp is very very deadly and you will want to take them out as soon as possible especially if you're lacking in the bait department okay so we have deals air damage to the closest enemy and furthest so that's pretty crazy they're going to be attacking both me and my other tank but that's fine because we're tanks Deals air damage to the strongest enemy two times. That's going to either target me or Hilarious, I believe. So that's not too bad either. We have to make sure we get rid of these guys as soon as possible. Let's see if these guys might bleed. Uh, to the closest three enemies. These guys are also a DPS. They have a lot of speed. They might be attacking before. Yes, they will be. So they have a lot of speed. They do the deals damage to closest three enemies. They have deals damage air damage to the strongest enemy and weakest so a lot of strongest and weakest here in this area deals air damage to a random enemy now these attacks are pretty okay they're not that bad the draft is probably the scariest attack and crushing wind depending on how hard they hit it is air damage so it shouldn't be too bad let's go ahead and check to see how we fare going manual now again target the first guy in my opinion as you can see here he's already pretty low i'm gonna keep healing we're doing okay so far everything seems fine lead doesn't be, seem to be destroying us which is great it seems like a fairly easy area for manual i'm gonna go ahead and try to auto this next area for this next enemy if there's new no new familiars okay everything is the same i'm gonna try auto so far so good i'm not having any issues at all and i only have a plus two a lattice I'm going to try one more, and if everything's fine, I will continue to auto and see you at the end of the dungeon. Alright, I am losing a little bit of health there, but I still have faith in this team, and I think we'll be okay, since they're all just normal enemies. So I will see you at the end of the dungeon. Alright. Pretty, pretty easy flag. Um, we pretty much just got XPs and gold, which is fine. Okay, we got our major healing potion, the 50 rune fragments, and the 10k gold. Let's go on to the fifth flag. Wrath Thena's Hill. For Thena's Hill? For Thena's Hill, okay. Find and defeat for Thena. And we're getting 25 ancient fragments. A bubbling cauldron, which makes one epic... Um, Enchant, which isn't the greatest, but that's fine. And 10k gold. You can get mud here and turnips, which is perfect. So it's a good spot to farm your mud. If you're stuck here, you can just keep farming for mud, I guess. If you want to do that, I would honestly probably do the last dungeon. But hey, it's an option. So keep the team the same. Everything seemed to be fine. Let's go ahead and accept. Okay. 
So since we are going to have to defeat something at the end, I will try to be a little more conservative by manualing this one. As you can see here, that bleed is doing a number on Aladdis. So you have to put as much heals on him as possible because that hurts. So just keep attacking those guys up front since they are the major problem. I'm going to keep healing with Aladdis more than anything. Okay. Here, Aladdis is looking fairly weak. I'm going to do a nice heal on him real quick. Heal from himself. Okay. Nice. Now, again, you don't need the mythics that I'm running. You can always have legendaries, and you could possibly even get away with two epics if you maxed out your set, which I didn't do. I don't have a max set. I have plus three on both my ring and neck. Okay. Again, just target out the front. I'm going to make sure okay here. Clean up, keeping the SP high, just in case we need it later. I'm gonna heal out. Alright, so far so good. Go ahead and go on to enemy. There you go. Okay, so there's three of these guys, so we got to take them out. I'm just going to use my ability to pretty much one-shot them. Now, it's looking a little scary, so I'm going to drop a heal. You know what? No, I'm going to damage him. Okay. Heal. Okay. So now we got to throw those heals out. I'm going to be healing a lattice, which means that Jurassic right now is weakest, so we got to be careful there. I'm going to go ahead and empower heal Hilarious. I'm going to be using my regular heal on the lattice. I'm going to drain. Okay, we should be pretty topped off. Drazig's a little, little low, but not low, but just missing a little bit, but that's fine. Come up through here. Have to pass through this guy. Not a problem. Okay, so again, just take them out. I have a very low SP, but I'm pretty confident that I can build it up. Just want to take out one of these guys so the bleed isn't that heavy on me. Okay. Get some heals going. Save some SP. Save some SP. Whoa. Let's go ahead and do an empowered or enraged heal here. Perfect. And we are back to topped off, but our SP is a little lacking. Not too bad on Drazic, but everyone else is pretty topped off. Got two more enemies here. Until we hit the boss, I believe. This should be fairly easy. I'm just going to one SP everything. See if I can get some shields from these guys. So far, everything is fine. These guys are just getting destroyed. This enemy is honestly fairly, fairly easy. They're the least of my worries in this area. Hopefully... Oh, there he is. Law of the Hills, number 544... <laughs> what? Law of the Hills, number 5477. You know what that means? It means that if a lawyer like me finds a bit hero like you, it's obliged <laughs> to beat your face. Okay, I guess. All right. So again, they're the least of our worries. This person up here is new, I believe. Right. Uh, deals air damage to closest enemy, heals target teammate two times. That is fairly easy. <laughs> a little flying elf. Yeah, they're pretty chilling. That's nothing to worry about at all. So you can honestly auto this area, but if you can't and you're having problems and you barely can get here, just target the Genia first because they will be destroying your Aladdis. I'm going to go ahead and do that right away just by nuking them out and then I'm going to auto the rest of it. Nice. Okay. So as you see there, the only problem is that one rare familiar that does bleed. So make sure you target them immediately because bleed pretty much ignores protections and just does health based damage i believe and it's pretty deadly even at current tier bleed is probably a top a top meta kind of attribute to use in your arsenal so just be careful so here we have the six flag clear the hills of all enemies it's going to be green typhoon hills maybe getting elemental fragments super potions and 10k gold here we have the turnip as the only thing to get other than the skeleton key. Everything else is meh. We're going to enter with the same team and see how it is. 
Now, if it's pretty much the same just with this elf character, it should probably be even easier now. But seeing as the elf comes up front, you're going to have to be using your target a whole lot more. As you can see here, I have to build SP just to take him out. So you have to be very, very conservative with your Drazic unless you're automatically just targeting them in the back. So here, I would love to heal, but I think it would be more beneficial to get rid of him. Oof, unfortunately I didn't, so hopefully we can get rid of him pretty soon. I'm going to drain here for some health. I'm going to heal real quick. Now I'm going to target the fourth guy, because if I get my brain proc, he should die right after. Perfect. So here, just build up SP and build up HP if possible. They have healing abilities, I believe. Yes, so they should be fine to sustain a little bit of your attacks. I would start off by healing your your bait of course and then healing your back tank or you if you still need health or hilarious try to use drain as much as you can just to stay sustained again you want to focus lattice what do they attack this enemy so they're just gonna be hitting me that's fine i'm gonna shield myself since i am now a uh, priority to a lot of the enemies here now and shield and heal hilarious Go ahead and heal with a lattice. Let's go ahead and drain. Nice. So this familiar does have a little more health than the other ones. They're taking quite a beating. Go ahead and heal me now. Heal myself. Okay, let's get some shields out. Get a heal back on Larius and drain. And that should be it there. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, first enemy down, but we got max SP on a lattice and a little bit of shields on everybody. So here it's, wow, four of these guys is gonna be pretty rough. We gotta be careful here. So we're gonna definitely have to enrage heal ourselves. Glad we had that enrage saved up. I'm gonna have to do damage here. I'm gonna try to damage this guy and see if I can kill one of these. Perfect, okay. So I'm gonna just zero SP with my main, zero SP with the lattice. We're looking a little weak here, but if I'm not mistaken, no, yeah, we are still the weakest with the Lattice. Hilarious may have a lower health bar, but his HP is higher, so he still has more HP than the Lattice, I'm pretty sure. Let's go down. We might be able to farm off this guy. Okay, we have three of them in the back. That's scary. We only have one SP. Might have two by the time we go again, so I'm going to Enrage attack this guy here in the middle. I'm actually going to target him out completely if possible. We need to get rid of him. As you can see, they're doing a number on the Lattice. Go ahead and shield self. Oh, so we got our first death. Go ahead and revive. I'm going to do a major revive. Okay, so that is only because, again, I am not stabled. So I don't have anywhere near as much of aid as I, as I possibly can. Right now I have 30, 5, 40, 5, and then add the rest was probably around 46, almost 47 of aid. So I am lacking just a little bit. So... That is going to be why I am actually losing a lattice, sadly, whenever I'm having some of these fights. So we need to save our SP to keep healing a lattice if possible. Seems like this damage first and try to sustain isn't working, so we got to be careful. The bleed was still kicking in. That's how you know, because this guy only attacks closest. So we're going to go ahead and heal him again. There you go. Now, know that if a lattice dies again... Drazig is next in line to be targeted, but they will also be targeted by a bleed. So it's not too bad because the bleed isn't that insane. I am gonna go ahead and actually do this one more time because I do really want to get rid of one of these guys. Let's go ahead and get him in the back. There's no way he evaded that. That's insane. Okay, I'm gonna drain. Oh, nice. He got deflected. Perfect. They have an attack for this? They do. Nice. Okay. That's best case scenario. I have this mount skill just in case I need it, so I'll be saving that. Go ahead and heal again. Go ahead and target the back line. Perfect, doing pretty good. Hopefully that one SP will pretty much get sent back to him. We'll check it out right now. Okay, we're doing fine, we're doing fine. I'll attack closest too. Perfect. And now I'll just focus on heals. Heals and shields for days. use some sp if you want just remember the heals are way more important than the sp in my opinion unless you're talking about drazig and alatus your main and hilarious don't really need sp as much as they do 
so far so good. Okay, we're pretty topped off on shields, not as much as we want, but we're looking a lot better than we did earlier. Where are the rest of the enemies? Ah, over here. Nice, okay. So we have four of them and one guy up front. This is probably the deadliest combo. I'm probably going to do a random empowered because it might kill one. Unfortunately, it doesn't. But if I target, I'm pretty low. I need to do heals really bad. Okay. Go ahead and heal Lattice again because the bleed's going to keep coming. I'm going to do closest two to get rid of him. Perfect. Do another heal here. Let's do another heal. Do a drain. Another heal. You can see here the, the the bleed is doing a number on the lattice. So I'm going to do my mount skill. See that? That's insane. Okay, so we're going to have to heal him again. He is just getting attacked with bleed. Okay, we're doing okay now. We're doing okay. We were able to sustain past the bleed a little bit. Do an enraged heal. Let's do another heal on the lattice. There you go. We should be fine here. Oh, <laughs> this is a roller coaster of emotions, but we seem to be fine now. Okay, that was getting scary, but as you can see, not having a good team, especially a good bait, could be the end of you on this area. This is a pretty challenging flag, if I'm going to be honest. So here we only have one, which means immediately target him out. Ooh, unfortunately, that was the wrong choice. I probably should have just healed my Alatus, because only one blue proc would have been proc. So it's fine. I was crossing my fingers, but we should be able to do this. We're towards the end. So here I'm going to do nothing but drain, since I don't have the Aladdis heals anymore. I'm going to go ahead and just keep using my 1SP. My 1SP there. Let's go ahead and target him in the back. We really got to get rid of him, but he might take out the Hilarious beforehand. I might swap them out real quick. Still targeting him. Let's go ahead and heal him. Yeah, he's, he's done for. The bleed's going to kick in any second. Okay, here we can swap back. I don't want to lose him. Now is this weak is perfect. We're going to do that. We need to target him out really bad. He won't die. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do that. This is getting pretty close. Okay. Let me heal myself. That's looking good. I could have targeted. I probably should have. That's fine. Well, we just pretty much wasted three potions here. That's insane. This is a very dangerous area. As you can see here, bleed is no joke. You either have to kill him real fast or just keep on healing. Now, I'm pretty sure all I have left is just some gold, so I'm going to continue. Nice. Okay, so that was probably one of the more difficult flags. We went ahead and got through it. We got our super potion, our elemental fragments, and our 10k gold, which is amazing. We are now at the second dungeon. Thicken Mool's Wind Hills. Navigate to Thicken Mool and defeat him. We will be getting two stat points and another 100 gems, which is great. Go ahead and enter. Actually, wait. Let's check the drops. We got mud and we got more turnips. Um, again, those are the only things you would want other than maybe the skeleton key. And if you really want robot sprockets, go for it. But let's go ahead and enter. Again, you're going to be using your friends list. So I'm going to go ahead and auto on through this. I will see you at the boss. Oh, howdy. A fellow lifter. How many reps did you do today, weakling? Well, I'm starting my routine of breaking your face right now. 96 reps. Wow, this guy is pretty brutal. Okay, so hopefully he doesn't die right away like that. Okay, well, I think I'm going to have to change my team because they just completely destroy everyone right away. Let's go ahead and go to town. And we will check them out. <laughs> Go ahead and see. So that's our rewards. We are going to be looking for Thicket Mole. So go here to Familiar. Just type in Thick. Go. And you can see that they lean more towards tank. They have air resistance. And it says deals air damage to closest enemy. Shield self, which is very nice. It's a zero SP for a tank. So that's scary for us. Uh, deals air damage to target enemy, so they have a target, which is pretty scary, um, but not too bad since they are a tank, and heal self two times. So this honestly isn't too much of a problematic familiar in my opinion, unless you're getting hit a lot with target, but 
I mean, again, it is your friends list you can use or your guildmates. You should be more than fine. So go ahead and go on to the seventh flag of the zone. Defeat all the enemies in the icy desert. Okay. So we're going to be getting the rune fragments, the average energy potion, and 10k gold. The drops are going to have the Kimusaba uh, Kimu schematic and the turnip as the main drops for you, along with the skeleton key. We're going to keep our team the same. Now, if you're wondering why we're keeping the team the same, this tends to be very standard for a lot of teams, which is going to be tank up front. Maybe not your highest stand, but a tank for sure up front. Your bait second. Your DPS third, because that's technically one of the safest spots, if not the safest spot in a four man. And then a tank, preferably higher stam in the back if you're going against stuff that attacks furthest or attacks strongest a lot, I believe. So we have a health shrine here, which is amazing. We have two new guys here. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the guy on the right because he looks pretty interesting. Okay, so best thing here is we got both of them. So we'll check them out. Here we have Verd which has 5% water resistance, a load of HP. Wowzers, so they're definitely a tank. So it deals water damage to closest and shields self. So that's fine. It's not too insane, but their shields are going to be a little beefy since their uh, damage is, is fairly decent. So they're nothing to worry about. They're just going to be something to feed off of and like, I guess, heal and stuff. Now, it seems like I already took some damage. So let's see what this guy does. 7.5 water damage. They have a lot of speed, so they're extremely fast. Very, very dangerous. Okay, so they have a lot of speed and decent strength with very low stam. So we'll see what we can do about that. Deals water damage to the closest three enemies. Now this is going to be troublesome. They're going to be attacking pretty much Drazic unless we move Eulerius up, which we actually might since there is no furthest here. We have deals water damage to weakest enemy and to strongest as well and then we have water damage to target enemy two times and freeze now that is the most dangerous ability so far that we've seen the freeze is okay but target two times is very deadly so what we should do is as of right now for this flag drazic is safest in the back and i also think Aladdis is safest third for some reason you don't really have to move them because it's closest three but i personally think it's safer that way so I'm going to go ahead and play like that. I'm going to try to manual, see how it is. Now we need shields, so I'm going to be using shields. So far, everything's fine. All the tanks are taking the damage. I'm going to zero SP here, see how it goes. So far, I don't know how, but they are attacking a lot. It's like crazy. I believe it's because of the attack closest three. So if you do have problems here, um, Oh no, they do have a weakest, so never mind. Jurassic would get targeted. Okay, not a problem, not a problem. Let's go ahead and proceed. Just keep on healing um, a lattice whenever you need to, and zero SP with everyone else, and you should be fine. But again, a lattice is not stabled. If you have a stabled one, you will have better results. I'll go ahead and shield myself up. Go ahead and heal a lattice. So here you're going to see Jurassic takes more of a healer role than anything. So if you have a healer versus a Jurassic, as you can see here, we're doing plenty of damage without using any damaging abilities on Drazi at all. And we're able to take them out fairly decently. But it is slower, so you do have a chance of getting those targets attacked to your Drazi. So let's go ahead and keep going here. Let's do some health there. Let's go ahead and zero SP. Heal myself. Go ahead and enrage drain. Let's go ahead and heal a lattice. Shields enraged with a lattice. Nice. Heal Eulerius. And everything here is good. Now we can just focus on building up some shields here. Waste your SP to heal so you don't hurt your enemy too much. You can just feed off of them. Fine, that's fine. Some shields, always nice. Do some 1 SPs here. Some more shields. Do a heal so we don't kill them right away. Another heal. Okay, looking good. Some more shields. And we are getting topped off. Now we'll 0 SP so I can actually get some SP for us. Perfect. Okay, so here we are leaving with a little more than halfway shields and a good amount of SP on a few of our guys. We do have the health shrine here. So let's go ahead and go this way. Okay, this is pretty easy. So if you saw before, these guys are mainly the problem. You could, of course, target them out like so. They're very, very weak. Let's see how much a lattice does to them. Even a lattice can pretty much one-shot them. So 
that is perfect you can literally auto these guys if you wanted so you can just target those guys and then auto these whenever you want to i recommend zero sp'ing these guys all the way and of course using shields when possible that way you can just be topped off as much as you possibly can like this is best case scenario this flag gives me a lot of promise for the rest of this zone so we should be fine from here on out unfortunately i can't really guarantee that because i don't remember what the third familiar is but we'll check it out here in a bit so as you can see here we're topped off all the way minus nubs sp but if i'm not mistaken we should reach that max here before this familiar dies nice there it is all right we're topped off completely so let's go ahead and go on to the rest of the enemies here it doesn't seem like we have a problem here we could potentially auto but i don't want to take any risks so we're just going to manual the rest of this okay again target out the guys in the back i'm going to enrage target this guy see how much damage you're doing to a lattice that's insane let's take let's get rid of him okay so it seems like here one bait is obviously all you need which is perfect uh, the only time you run two baits is if your baits are just exploding so if you have one really strong bait and a dps familiar that has some kind of heals or if you have some kind of heal that are really good or if your bait like lattice has good sustain then you should be fine you don't necessarily need a second tank if you have a second drazig probably a better idea but if you have that you would want a max stable a lattice in the back just know that okay so here we're pretty much feeding off like last time Get those shields up. You can damage them if you want. That way it can be faster since we already have the SP. Shields are pretty much there already. Now we're just going to destroy. That's familiar. Nice. Okay. Here. Get them over there. Oh, that's a pretty big area. Three guys in the back, so... Target. Target. Okay. Try to get this guy so the brink can hit him. Didn't, unfortunately. That's fine. There we go. And now, just zero SP. Your way to victory. You already know how it is with these tank familiars. You just steamroll them. Keep on going. Pretend they don't even exist, honestly. Not in this zone. <laughs> this area is pretty easy, honestly. I'm not going to lie. Be a lot easier if my lattice wasn't just slacking on me <laughs> but it's just so hard to farm him up since he's a raid familiar raid familiars are honestly kind of difficult but a lattice is one of the best familiars in the game due to the fact that they are a hybrid style familiar which is what i really really love about a lattice okay after this we have one more enemy we need only two in the back so since they're not really a problem and i'm not really using my sp i'm just going to kill them in auto Nice. Okay, we're going to run into the Hell Shrine, even though we're not going to need it. And we're going to take out that last familiar towards the bottom of the map. There you go. Take off auto. Target out these guys in the back. Target you. And target you. Boom. Not quite there yet. There you go. I'm just going to auto on through. And just like that, we got through the first flag of this third area in this zone. So, flag number seven, pretty easy. Let's go ahead and reap our rewards. There's our stuff. Go on to the eighth flag. Find and defeat Prima Dur, which is someone new. Ancient fragments, average badge pouch, and 10k gold. We have mud here and a schematic as well, along with the turnip. Go ahead and enter. We're going to keep this the same, actually, until we figure out what that new familiar does. If they're here right away. So far, it's this guy. And we do have the new one here. Let's check him out. He looks kind of weird. Beerkund. Uh, Beerkund. <laughs> um, water damage. Seems like they have more strength than speed. So they're harder hitting. They have a target zero SP, which is very scary and a weakest so they can just constantly keep attacking your lattice boom 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 that is scary they even have attack for this enemy two times so although 
they have that. I think I still want to do the layout I had before. Um, we just have to take them out first. But this is going to be a lot harder. We might even have to swap familiars. As you can see here, he's taking quite a beating. Go ahead and heal him up. The fool. That enrage is coming in clutch. Let's go ahead and do some more heals. Okay, as you see here, this is nowhere near an auto dungeon for us. We have to play this one very, very carefully. I'm gonna zero SP there since I'm pretty sure we can get rid of them. Yes, perfect. The that was just the first enemy. We haven't even gone to the boss, which is the scary part. So we're gonna try to avoid as many of these guys as possible. I should have gone straight. I don't know why I did that. So here, zero SP, because you're gonna need your heals for sure. Saved. I will use SP with Eulerius, I don't mind that. Go ahead and enrage heal a lattice. He would have died there otherwise. Enrage heal again. Go ahead and zero SP. Okay, here we need to make sure he doesn't die. Let's enrage heal him again. Perfect. Now we have enough SP for the mount skill if we need it. He seems okay. I'm gonna go ahead and use this target. Nice. Oh, not nice. Very not nice, actually. We're gonna have to major revive him here. This might be a flag we get stuck on. Flag 8 is usually notoriously the hardest flag in most areas, so I saw that coming. Go ahead and see if we can cut through here. Perfect. We might not even have to go up. Let's try this rightwards path. Okay, there's more areas here which seems promising. Okay, so I think we just need to get rid of the guys in the back like always because we're able to kill them pretty fast. The guys up front just take beating really easily. Okay, here I can do this one. Get rid of two almost. Ooh, not, not quite. Heal up. Okay. So now Eulerius is looking kind of weak. Hopefully he's weakest target right now. Go over here. Make him lucky. We are unlucky. Okay. So he was straight up. That means we fought all this for no reason. So let's go ahead and save our enrage, but take out this guy in the back if possible. Enrage heal. Okay, okay, that's dangerous. <laughs> okay, we definitely got to heal a lattice. Perfect, okay. So I'm going to do this to take him out. Heals. Your SP. Enrage, heal a lattice again. I'm going to use my 1 SP here. Zero SP, okay. That's nice, but very, very, very scary. Um, a lattice is very weak right now. We have no SP on Drazig, but we have some SP on Yolarius. I mean, Alatus, which isn't really the use, that useful. Go ahead and heal him with an Enraged Heal. We will Enrage Shield ourselves. I'm going to Enrage Closest. I have no choice but the zero SP. Nice, we got rid of him. Okay, I'm going to use this one to get rid of two. Here, I'm going to do some Enraged Heals, which is perfect. I want Yolarius to be as weak as possible just so they can take the weakest hits. I'm gonna shield, that way we can keep them weaker. Okay, let's go ahead and continue. Now here, the boss should be somewhere around here. There they are, okay. So this guy's actually pretty deadly. I hope he only comes with one or two familiars and no more than that. Hey, you better give me a nice compliment. My gills want it. You have disrespected my gills. Now they want you dead. Wow, some anger issues. Okay, best case scenario. So we are going to just nuke him out in the back. Boom. Take care of it, Aladdis. Get out of here. We don't even got to worry. I'm just going to auto these guys. Oh, that was actually very, very scary. Very early on for no reason. So that's good that we were able to take them out. Go ahead and finish this off. So we got some XP's and gold, and we got a mini serum, which is cool. Let's go to town. Awesome, we got our rewards. Now we are on the last flag, guys, and then we'll be tier 15 once we beat the dungeon after this. Let's see if we can do it. Gelid Wasteland. Clear, uh, clear the wasteland of all enemies. Now here we're going to be getting 10 elemental fragments, 1 ticket roll, 10k gold. We have the Kimusawa schematic. For some reason, there's no mud farm here, which is kind of crazy. We have turnips and uh, pretty much everything else here is normal. Let's go ahead and enter. Keep the team 
with Drazig in the back, actually. I think is how we were doing it. It was working pretty well and allowed us third. So let's try that. Okay. So these guys are in the back, which is troublesome. Do they attack furthest? They do this. They do. Okay. So I'm going to put various back there and they also do weakest and target. So they pretty much attack whoever they want. So go ahead and put a lot of second. It's going to be the way we had it before. Zero SP. Let's do shields. Zero SP. They're already getting nuked out. Now you can choose to heal here or to damage. I'm going to personally zero SP. You do your SP with your main. You're going to always heal with a lattice as much as you can. Now here is where you decide. Do you want to heal him or damage? I'm going to go ahead and heal lattice. And I'm going to be using enraged attacks with Eularius. Now Eularius is going to rely on heals from your lattice. But your lattice is going to rely on heals from your Drazig. So you just got to pretty much heal, 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 poke, heal, 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 poke. That's pretty much how you're going to handle a scenario like this since there's a lot of tanks up front and these freaking weasels here in the back. You want to get rid of these weasels. I hate them, man. So, yeah, let's go ahead and target them out. Let's try to get rid of one at least because that's the problem right now. I'm going to go ahead and use this zero SP actually. Let's go ahead and heal. Whoa there. They pretty much got rid of a lattice right away actually. That's quite insane. So it seems like we're going to have to build up SP very fast somehow and pretty much take them out that's our only option let's go ahead and kill this guy here and we'll go ahead and do the weakest right there we're gonna keep healing on up we have to heal as much as possible here all your heals are going to hilarious you're gonna save all your enrage all of your enrage is gonna be saved you can use your sp on your hilarious that's fine go ahead and shield up i'm gonna shield myself up okay go ahead and shield Go ahead and heal again, even though we don't really need it. Just to save some time, get more heals, and get that SP back. Mm. Okay. That was the first enemy, guys. This could be very troublesome. We might be stuck here for a little while. Okay, we got two ferrets up front, and this is a very fast team. I say we do some damage, but save the enrage. Nice. We did pretty good there. We could either damage or we could heal. I'm personally going to see if I can damage. See if I can drain a little bit. Get some health back. Nice. Okay. Go ahead and do the closest two. Take him out. Get some heals in there. Closest. Closest. Get some shields out. Perfect. Okay. So we did pretty good there. It seems like once you get SP going, everything is fine. But starting off with zero SP is very scary on this map. It's uh, a little scary with those ferrets. See, we have two ferrets here, and you see a lot of health already. I'm going to save the Enrage. I don't think we need it quite yet. I'm going to go ahead and use this random. Unfortunately, we got someone we didn't want to hit, but that's fine. Use my Enrage here. I'm going to target out that weasel. Nice, we got the weasel. The closest to the random hit. That's exactly who I wanted to hit, so that's perfect. I would target him out, but I think it'd be smarter to heal him first. Okay, here we're getting dangerously weak. Dangerously weak. And rage heal him for sure. And here you can use your target. I'm going to use the drain. Nice. He just got one shot full to zero by the freaking ferret, man. Can you believe that? One to zero. That's insane. This guy just like, nah, he's dead. I don't want him around no more. I think if I'm not mistaken, he hit him with icy crash. Icy crash is very, very deadly. So what might have to happen is I might have to switch. He water damage. He's water damage. I might have to switch to bait just for this. Hopefully I have enough gold to do that. Because if I do, I will take over the bait roll. It'll be a lot easier. So if we fail here, that is going to be my plan. It's always good to have a backup plan like that when something like this happens. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the end. It could be fine. Remember, Drazik does have more health than... Um, a lattice so you can just save all your sp on drazig and heal yourself but these weasels are, are ruthless man they're insane I'm probably gonna nuke them out right there okay, i'm gonna heal myself there oof yeah i don't see him lasting that long that's pretty much game i don't think we should um use anything else see if i can auto this with just myself seems like i can 
<laughs> if I can, that's crazy. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So right now I'm pretty much relying on deflect to do its job. As long as they can get deflected to the guys in the back, I should be able to just sustain these guys up front. Go ahead and stop here. Shield myself. Take over a little bit. Rely on the deflect to do his job. Seems like I'm doing fairly well. I don't even need familiars. Who needs familiars, man, when you got yourself? Right or am I right? Get that SP. Get a nice heal. Look at that. Back to full. Okay. Are you just going to one SP all the way through like this? Wow, talk about cheesed. Look at that deflect. People said deflect wasn't good. Who said deflect wasn't good? Look at that. Okay. I think we can handle this. This fair is the only thing that scares me, honestly. Okay, there's a lot of DPS from that. So we're gonna have to do some monster damage. Do this. My goodness, that main hand is devastating. Look at that. I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna use myself. Who needs familiars? Okay, so you're pretty much gonna zero and one SP, zero and one SP, and when you're fighting these guys right here, the Verno or whatever they're called, Verd, <laughs> you're gonna save up for your Sky Split. That hits pretty hard. Okay, turns out I didn't need anyone after all. So as you can see here, I really didn't need all this crazy stuff. I really think. I didn't need those mythics. I think I could have gotten by with just epics and maxing these two out, but that's what I got. Literally just got these just farming for the set really easily, so I had to take advantage of them. But that is going to be the last flag. If you guys were having any problems, consider maxing out one more piece or just trying again. Again, if you have a weaker um, a bait, something that's not stable, you will have problems. So make sure you have your bait as stable as possible before attempting this. I have to keep moving because I'm making videos for you guys, so I have to keep it busy. I do plan to change my character to a bait, so I'm not really focusing too hard on a lattice. I do want to go back when I do need to get more baits in the future, but I'm planning on just getting through here as easily as possible, as quick as possible, and switching my role to bait role once I pass, I'd say tier 16, once I hit like maybe tier 17, I'm going to be taking over the bait role, I believe. Let's go ahead and hit that last dungeon. Melika's Glacier. Grit your teeth and defeat Melika. It's in its glacier. You're gonna be getting three stat points and 100 gems. We do have mud here and everything else is the same. Go ahead and enter. I'm gonna clear my list and just add one person. I'll add whoever's on top, which is Coda. Perfect. Hopefully Coda doesn't destroy them right away. And go ahead and accept. Now, seeing as it's pretty much the same thing as what we just did, I'm going to go ahead and auto on through until I get to the boss. I'll see you there. Ah, such a cute little minion you are. How do you spell your name? Let me do it for you. D-E-A-D-H-E-R-O. I would honestly laugh so hard if they misspelled any of those words. That would be hilarious. <laughs> let's keep going. Turn off that auto right away. Okay, but let's check out Melica. Melissa, however you want to say it. We have 10% water damage indicating they are a DPS or healer. They do have more speed. And they have a decent amount of health. Not too low, actually. And a lot of damage. So they are pretty well-rounded. They have damage to the furthest enemy, which is a very scary thing to have on any familiar. So you want to make sure you have that tank in the back or a very solid bait. Heals weakest teammate three times. I don't get the point of the three times, but they do it. Heals target teammate, which is okay, I guess. And uh, spread heal teammates. So they are literally nothing to worry about. But that zero SP is going to be nuking the back line. So if you do have a weaker team, you might want to take them out or put your stronger guys in the back if possible. Now, seeing as this is going to be using my friends list, I'm just going to auto on through. All right, and we finally did it. We got through tier 14. There's our rewards. Goodbye, South Peak. Completed. 
Hello, Fenrir's Omen. Let's go. Okay, tier 15. Now, in my opinion, guys, this is where stuff gets very, very serious. So we are going to have to farm and max out everything, I believe, in our arsenal in order to get past this effectively. I might even go back and get at least one, if not two more Aladdis. I might even max them. So we'll go ahead and see what we do for Fenrir's Omen. But before I go ahead and go on with all the drops and stuff, I'm going to go ahead and complete these stars in the dungeon so I can show you what drops in Gauntlet. I'll be right back. Okay, we went ahead and finished all these dungeons in South Peak. We also unlocked the Iron Fate, which is clear the dungeon of all enemies. All enemies have 100% barrier. We cannot do this currently, unfortunately, but we will be coming back to this in the future. Let's go ahead and show you all the rewards. So for PvP, I'm technically locked in. Um, it doesn't really show you anything here anyways. GVG, same thing. It doesn't really give you anything that you would really want other than, of course, your material. Right now, I'm still bound to the 14. Um, but we can go to Gauntlet, and I can show you the Tier 15 rewards here. Uh, right now, just ignore this. This is just going to be um, some cosmetics you can farm during this week. Um, we have two new mythics here, which is Boreas Emissary. It's a main hand. It's going to give you 4% air resistance, 4% earth damage, 25% chance to give 1 SP to your teammates when you heal. Now, this is really not the craziest thing in the world. It's really good when you pair it with a certain setup, but it's, again, healer-based and healers dropped off very very hard i do not recommend going for this main hand but if you get it it is a s extremely sick cosmetic and it's a pretty decent main hand but just know that healers have fallen off so this might not be for you trust me we have the off hand which is going to be berea's interceptor gives you four percent earth resistance or air resistance sorry four percent earth damage and it has weakened reduce the enemy team's sp regeneration by 10 percent now in my opinion that's not that great either i highly recommend avoiding it um of course we have the mintinerals don't we all love those and another set here which is going to be a healer set i kind of don't recommend this set it's not bad it's just not um the ideal set in this tier for tanks and baits specifically especially so here the two set is four percent of power when healing gain 3% damage bonus up to 12%. Your healing skills have 50% cleanse the target, which is awesome. Really good against bleed, freeze, anything like that. 20% team SP regeneration and 50% chance to bolster 10, which is spread heal or spread shield, sorry, when you heal. So it's a pretty nice set, don't get me wrong. It's just it's a healer set, strictly healer, has no resistances that you would benefit from other than um yeah it has none actually at all so it's not really that great unless you're a dps and you want to switch it up you have a really nice dps familiar and you want to try healing you could try it it's a very solid set but again it's not what shines in this tier let me go ahead and show you the world boss let's go ahead and check out what we have i know that one's gone i know that one's gone that one's gone that one's gone we have a titans one let's go and show you so here are the cosmetics, of course, from the last one. We have two very nice um, mythics, I believe. So here is Boreas Meteor, which is going to have electric resistance, air damage, and 10% barrier if you have the highest health. Mind you, highest health on your team. This ring is very, very solid in this tier, guys. Barrier pretty much makes it to where if anything attacks you, it ends the attack. So no brain procs, no pet procs, will proc after the hit no dual strike if it if it barriers the first hit the second dual strike part the second hit will be negated um it won't be blocked or anything it will just cancel it out altogether same thing with quad strike um so it's very strong guys barrier is very very nice um we also have the Bria suit this one's nowhere near as good as the ring but um it's a nice cosmetic it gives you electric resistance air damage and silence which is five percent chance to prevent enemy from using sp skill if that was like a ten percent that would be nice to me five percent is fairly low so i don't recommend it personally uh we have the opinions that everybody loves we have three mythic schematics here one being thunmolf 
the other one being Vedalumbus, uh, and the other, the last one being, of course, Tethius, which we are going for in this Let's Play. And here is the set we will be going for 100% for sure here, which is going to be the Perkuna set. A lot of you have heard of Perkunas, and if you haven't, you will, I promise. Perkunas used to be the most broken set in the game by far until Witcham came out, but this is such an amazing set. You might even take it with you all the way, honestly. It's very solid. So let's start off with the bonuses. First off, it does give electric resistance. It's a four piece set. The two piece is 5% redirect chance, which is great for tanks. It's amazing. That alone is, is nice. Obviously you don't just run a two piece, but that is something that you're gonna really be using as well, which is the redirect, which I really like. We do have the three piece bonus, which gives you 20 block if you have the highest health on your team. Now, just having a three piece set of this alone will give you five redirect and 20% block. That's really nice. But again, you will want to try to take advantage of everything else, especially this last part here, which is going to be 30% barrier, 30% chance to, uh, to heal and cleanse, heal and cleanse guys, 30% chance to heal and cleanse self for a certain amount when you get hit guys, that's pretty much a pet proc on steroids with that cleanse that is very very solid i highly recommend you guys get this set if you're going tank i i cannot stress enough how good this is as a tank do not run it as bait um because then you won't get that 20 percent block you want to run it as a tank now everything else here is the same as before we'll go ahead and see the other world boss we have which is going to be the last one for this tier i believe yes it is which is going to be the ignited abyss go ahead and check out tier 15 we have the same cosmetics and we have one of the better main hands in the game, which is Burial's Battle Axe. Very, very, very good main hand, not because of the bonus, but because of the skills. This has 4% electric resistance and 4% air damage. You gain 10% air damage on shielded targets. Now, that's just a little bonus on shielded targets. It's okay, but when you see the skills, if we can get it, I'm not sure because I don't really farm this world boss. I'll try to see if I can leave a link or something in the description. If I get one, you will see how strong this um, main hand is just by reading the skills. We also have Berea's Space Cat, which is a very sick cosmetic as well. Gives you 4% electric resistance, 4% air damage, and Expender 5. Expender 5 means that you spend 5 SP and then this will happen gain 20% air damage. After that, for the rest of the battle, I'm not sure about the match, but for the rest of the battle, you will have that 20% air damage after you spend five SP. So obviously this is gonna be on something like a DPS or a healer or even a speed bait if you wanna try that route. It's not really recommended. It's very um, experimental with a lot of different layouts. I wouldn't try it, to be honest, in this early of a, of a game state. Here we have the pinions, of course. We have two mythic schematics, which is Hunaku schematic, and we also have the Zordon Gong schematic. And here is another set, which I believe is a very strong set for DPS if you are going the DPS route. Right Bros. Right Bros is a nice set because of its fourth attribute, and I'll show you here. For the two set bonus, you'll see Air Adrenaline 3, and then you'll see for the three piece bonus, 15% in power against shielded targets so you can see this combined with burial's battle axe giving you the shielded targets bonus is very nice for the four piece bonus 15 percent air damage brave heart which is 50 percent chance to ignore the enemy's defenses now that is very strong that is very very strong if you can pair that with a really nice main hand you will not have any problems at all i promise you that is very solid so that is what you would want to go for if you're a DPS in my opinion. But before we go ahead and decide that, let's check out the raid set. I'm trying to remember what the raid set is here. We're going to be going to Metal Mountain, I believe. Yes, Metal Mountain. Defeat a Bernario and collect his legendary gear. Go ahead and check it out. Let's check out the rewards. Very sick mount. I love this mount, honestly. Let's check out these two mythics. We have Burial's Fire Eye, which is 4% resistance, uh, fire resistance, 4% water damage, and 25% chance to attack enemy team when you evade. Now, mind you, this isn't a 25% chance overall. You have to evade first, 
and then you have a 25% chance. So once you evade, you have a 1 in 4 chance of hitting the enemy team. Um, and it doesn't even tell you how much. So it might be just 100% of your damage. I don't know. But um, just know that it's a percentage of a percentage. So if you're going to run this, you want to have evade as maxed out as possible. Now, this set, I'm going to tell you right now. This is not a bad set at all. This set is really good. We'll go over it right now. I'm getting ahead of myself. So Berea's Fire Scroll, uh, Fire Resistance, Water Damage. The enemy team takes 3% extra damage. Not the greatest Mythic, in my opinion. I'd rather have it at 5%. Even then, still not that great. Mythic Curios are always a win. We have Kimusaba Schematic and Hunaku Schematic. Now we're getting on to the good part, which is the set. This set, guys, is very solid, especially because Evade becomes way more prominent from Tier 17 and above. So if you guys want to dab into or dabble into some evade, let's say you got lucky and got an evade um, accessory or you plan to make one or get one, this set is a very, very, very strong start, uh, starting set. Other than the set in tier 12, I believe, this set is a very close, uh, is actually way better than that set. So this set is, is amazing. Let's go ahead and start off. So you're going to be getting fire resistance, right? And it's 10% max shields. That alone is very nice. Anything with max shields is nice. That's more of a health pool. You have 5% evade if you have the lowest health in your team. Now this is a bait set. If you're lacking in the bait department like I am, this is super solid. Very, very solid. Here you have plus 15 evade. You already have plus five here. Plus 15 evade if you are shielded. If you're shielded, you have more shields. It's complementing itself. That's already 20 evade just right here. And four, gain 2.5 evade for each 5% redirect up to 25%. Extort. Honestly, I don't remember Extort being on this set. I'm not sure if it was added or I just never noticed, but I did not know Extort was on here. This set is extremely good just because it has extort alone makes it a much better set in my opinion if you uh saw any of the previous let's plays you saw with my um my uh i think it was called flame warden fire it's a it's like a, a fire looking set it has extort and extort pretty much makes it to where you attack the closest enemy at the very start of the match and you gain that much damage added to your shields so that'll top off your shields right away which will pretty much give you that 15 percent evade right off the bat but just know once you lose those shields, you lose that 15% of aid. So make sure you have some kind of shield pet or heal shield or something. This is a very, very solid set. I recommend either this set or Percunus. If you want to go bait really bad, this one's good. And it's also really good at combining with another set if you have Star Weave in the future. You don't even need Star Weave to take advantage of uh, matching this with another set in the future in tier 17. So I highly recommend if you do want to go evade, at least, but you want Percunus, at least get the body in the ring and save them. Trust me, you can mix it with another set in the future called Witchum, which is very nice to combine with. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and go on to the raid portion of this. So let's go ahead and check out those new familiars. Okay, here's one. Okay, we have all three new familiars here. Other than the boss, of course. This is going to be Hanfrin, Hanfarin, which is 10% fire resistance. They're automatically the tank when you look at their health, you can tell. They also have Forge, plus 1% fire damage and plus 1% fire resistance per turn up to 15%. So the more fire you have, the more, uh, I mean the more fire you have, the more speed or agility you have, the more faster you can uh, pretty much build this up. So skills is deal fire damage to the closest enemy. Heal self as a one SP. Deals fire damage and drain from selected enemy and combustion. Very nice attack actually. I wish it was a one SP. Um, deals fire damage and drain from all enemies two times. Now that is very good for sustain. Very, very good ability. Unfortunately, all they have is fire resistance. So that kind of takes them out of my list. Now, Ferumar here has a uh, 10% fire damage and they have forge as well they do uh, um these skills here which is flaming gaze deal fire damage to the weakest enemy in combustion that right there is extremely dangerous that is a bait destroyer especially when they stack up that combustion it'll just nuke them out so you have to be careful with this 
This is priority number one so far. Deals fire damage to closest three enemies. That's pretty bad as well, but um, that um, combustion is a little scarier, but this damage is pretty high. So this familiar already is very, very troublesome, especially with the amount of agility they have. Just remember, you can use your friends list here or your guildmates. You should be fine. Deals fire damage to the furthest enemy two times. Deals fire damage to target enemy and combustion. Combustion is scary, guys. Okay, let's check out this last one. They look kind of healer-ish. They seem to have healer attributes here. They have fire damage. They have forge as well. And their zero SP is they heal target teammate. Deal fire damage to closest enemy. Okay. Heal self. Pretty useless attack for a healer. I kind of hate that that's a heal self. And heal and shield weakest teammate two times. Yeah, this is not the greatest familiar in the world. They are probably the least of your worries. Just focused on... Ferumar, if you are having problems and you are having to manual this, Ferumar and then anyone else whenever you want. I'm going to auto on through this until we come across another familiar or the boss. I'll see you there. Oi, mate. Me and my friend have been waiting for those burritos for months now. Where do you have them? You don't have them? Oh, no. So I'll make a burrito out of you. We are hungry. I didn't even notice that guy. It's funny. Okay. Turn off the auto. And he died anyways. Okay. So we will be checking them out right after we defeat this. That's unfortunate. We keep killing the enemies a little too fast, but it's fine. We're getting closer to the end of um, this Let's Play. Or towards the end of the tiers. So... It'll be a lot harder to just auto kill once we get around tier 17 ish. Go ahead and go to town so we can go ahead and see what that familiar looks like. Now, their name is going to be Aber. A B E R. Go and collect that daily. Pick them there. Legendary familiar, of course. Okay, fire damage. Usually in the case that they are a DPS, you can see here high damage, decent speed, low health. They have Forge as well. Deals fire damage to closest enemy and combustion. Very, very strong. Immediately want to target this guy out before anyone else. Deals fire damage to random enemy. Look at the damage of that. That is literally four times the amount of Flaming Iron. Very strong attack with a zero SP. Slow-ish, but very hard hitting. Deals fire damage to target enemy two times. Very scary as well. Deals fire damage to the strongest enemy three times. Deals fire damage to all enemies and combustion. Now, very, very strong familiar. If I were you I, and you were actually having problems in that raid, you will want to focus that familiar and then that other epic familiar that I pointed out earlier. That's pretty much going to be it for the entry of tier 15 and we finally said goodbye to tier 14. Now, we are finally in the big leagues. Tier 15 and above is where I consider entry to end game. So we are finally leaving mid game and entering end game. We are now in the more harder parts of the game. You'll start seeing more element stuff like combustion, breeze, bleed, stuff like that is going to be on just about every familiar the further you go on through. So just know that it is going to be a little more challenging. I recommend if you don't have a legendary accessory at all, please, please focus as much gems as you can to get something decent if you're playing a tank or bait, especially if you're a bait. Bait, you have to be tip top with your accessory. You have to be able to max block if you're going to run block, have high damage reduction if you're going to run damage reduction. Deflect, you have to have, like how I have it, a very high amount of deflect in order to run deflect but you also have to have other resistances now before i go ahead and end this video i do want to point out why the last area of the last zone was so easy for me and why i could auto it one deflect of course was how i did my damage but you don't necessarily need that to deal damage if i have if you have a very strong main hand like how i have this one does damage as it is very good amount of damage the shock will be helping you tremendously but the reason why I did so well and why I was able to solo was because they were water damage enemies. I have four water resistance here for each piece. I have four for these two right here as well. And then I also come with 20% water resistance here, 25% water resistance there. 
that alone is pretty much all the resistance I would have needed to solo that area. But I also have damage reduction because of this. And I also have um, just a little bit of block here and there, both for my accessory and my my enchants. If we go to info here and we go all the way to the bottom, somewhere you'll see the resistances. My water resistance is at 44. And I don't think that is counting the 25 here because that's only while I'm below 70% health. So I'm essentially at almost 70% water resistance without having any water resistant runes. So I was very, very tanky to all of those familiars, which is why I was able to sustain myself. So if you have this set, the reason why I went for this set, not only is because Titans was a thing that I was going to be farming in the future for a while, but I knew that the last area was going to have a water style um, enemy in there that was going to give me problems from when i did it before i remember the last was water and the beginning was earth i just didn't remember the middle one but um that being said this set is probably the best one if you have a decent accessory or a decent setup so yeah guys if you guys are still trying to pass tier 14 i highly recommend this set out of all the sets in the game it has the most elemental resistances out of all the sets um, in the game it comes with a base 45 so that is pretty high Keep an eye out for the set if you guys haven't looked at it yet. It's very solid. But now we're in tier 15, so we're going to be kissing the set goodbye once we get Perkunis or the Evade set in Raid. Thank you so much for stopping by. I do want to say that I will be trying to come back on track with these sooner. I do have a boost and some stuff saved to go ahead and push for this tier already. I'm going to see if I can try to save up some gems to get some more Raid shards. Um, but other than that, um, we should be heading off uh, towards the end of this tier fairly soon compared to tier 14 since i do have some stuff saved up from congiversary and the thanksgiving event so that is great thank you so much for stopping by again if i messed anything up please fix it in the comments if you guys notice it thank you so much for anyone there that leaves tips or answers any questions that i might have missed and honestly guys i love y'all thank you so much for all the support good luck with your runs in tier 14 and if you're past me awesome Good luck to all of your grinds out there. I really hope you get the items that you're looking for. Thank you so much for stopping by. This was World Leader. Have a great one, guys. Peace.